it's not the best angle. Maybe I should back it up. Here, wait. Uh, baby, you're driving. I thought we were going to shoot a little. I am. I could oh, drive well, us to the driving? bagel store. See, this is what happened. Every time we leave the fertility clinic, this one craves a bagel with cream cheese and lox. And of course, There's me, who is a fat girl in real life, <laughs> in my mind anyways, in my heart, um, of course gives in. And then I complain that I gained 10 pounds. such a good wing woman like anything I want you to do I could talk you into like I love that about you are you sure this is you know push over no I don't really care what you call it I love that <laughs> I need that in my I'll life I need woman. somebody who's gonna sit past and just seat even when they drive it so oh let me put my seatbelt on anyway it is February 15th 2023 2023 and um I just got my I've got IVF schedule for my arena. Um, our, my follicles went down. So two years ago when we did this, they were, I think she said like 12 and 16 in the right and left ovary. And this year they're three and six. So it made me really nervous. Um, I hope it's okay. I'm sure it's fine. But thank God, like I have, like sometimes I think you could like not have like any follicles left and then, and then what, there's nothing to work with at all. You need follicles, I, I believe, to work with. Like, even if you had one, you so could work too. with it. But I don't... I mean, at least we got, what, six, seven... We've got nine to work with, and we're going for quality over quantity. So... So, being the um, healthiest version of me that I could possibly be, and I've been for a while, so... Let's see how it goes. I will be starting on March 3rd. Right now, on birth control. And again, like feeling it already, which same thing as last year. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. Why are you laughing? Because like day two, she was like, I'm feeling a little feminine. And like, yeah. maybe it's the birth control, the estrogen. And like, she was totally like, the voice was like peaking and she was making like different girly or like, mm, like whiny noises. And it's like whiny? so true. Yeah. Like your voice when you're like. Like your dog voice, but you weren't talking to the dog. You were like being real. The way I talk to the dogs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that is. And I feel, I don't want to say I have a temper, but like I'm more short fused, right? Yeah. Yes. It really does affect me. It's, it's frustrating, but you know, what are we going to do? That's what we got to go through. Um, all in all, with the birth control, it's going to be, we're talking like six weeks out of life. I just started, right? Not even. I gotta I just tell her, take it easy there, estrogen. <laughs> Is that what you tell Take it easy there, take estrogen. Take it easy there. <laughs> All right, guys. We are um, signing off over to get some comfort food. I think I'd like to just put in there that we Thanks. loved that we documented the entire process last time, but it really didn't end up well, and you just never know. So I love you. I love you, too. I can't hold my phone up because I just had blood work taken for like the fifth time this week <clears throat> and my arm's sore but I'm left-handed so I'm like just keep taking it from that same vein on the right but it's been a lot so today is March 11th this is the first time I am I think getting on here and filming anything and I don't know if we'll post it or not so I started the second round of IVF last Friday March 3rd so this is day I'm going into day eight. So it's Saturday, March 11th. Left the fertility clinic, had to do blood work and an internal ultrasound. Um, and we're getting close. So egg retrieval is probably going to be on Wednesday. So now every day, you know, leading up to it, I need to keep getting blood work and ultrasound. Prior to that, it was every other day, the first few days starting. So basically, same process as two years ago. However, my doctor changed some of the medications a little bit. There's a new one, HCG, HGC, one of those. I guess they've been seeing patients have been having more luck with it, so they're using it. So I did not do that last time. I just did the Menopure. Low dose H 
CG. So what was scary about this this time, so I am, I'm 40 now, right? I was 38 when we did this. So I have a really hard time with birth control. It makes me spacey and you have to do that three weeks prior to starting. And I guess it regulates you so you don't like basically so you don't get your period. So that always aggravates me because I'm the most regulated person to begin with. But it makes me so weird. Like I just don't like being on it. It's been such a crazy, crazy process this time more than last. Like, and I know like you're not supposed to be stressed while you're doing this, but I've been stressed throughout so much of it. And I really hope it doesn't affect anything, but I mentally felt prepared. So I wanted to go through with this now. Another reason why too, is because again, like two years, like when I started this in 2021, I had like, I think I had like 11 follicles on one side and like 16 on the other. And apparently like according to how many follicles you have, of course, it's going to be the likelihood of you producing these fertile eggs, right? Each follicle, I guess, contains an egg and maybe some don't or if they all do, it depends on like the quality. So the more you have, like even though it's quality over quantity, like it's, it's going to help, right? So I go in this time and it was something like three and five on each side, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but that's a huge decrease, right? And I know it's probably has a lot to do with age, but that's scary. I want one, you know, I want to have this baby with Jen and I don't know, like I'm just hoping so much that it's like, like that it works this time. I've been taking prenatals for months, eating healthy, going to acupuncture, which again, hate needles and doing all the things. I'm ready. So over it. Oh God. I really look like, look at my stomach. This, what the hell? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't go too far out to the side. <laughs> ah, that one's side now. That's sore now over here. Oh God, okay. Do you feel that? Yes, I felt it. I'd be here better with two hands. Oh. Wow, this is feeling thick. Why was it taking so know. long to go? I don't know. Ow. Wait, we got one more. Fine. Maybe I should have like a yeah, one somewhere I I had a down. There. Yeah. It was well, hard going in. Because you shot, you shot me and then you, you one-handed it because you were trying to show the camera. All right, guys. We got another one. So this was three tonight. One before I started videoing, then this. And then another one. Are you all right? Yeah. Sunday, couple more days. Thursday. Yeah, I'm aware. Signing off. It is Tuesday, March 14th. And we are here for egg retrieval. I am nervous and I'm thirsty. And my stomach hurts. Thirsty. Yeah, I'm thirsty. I couldn't have anything to drink. Midnight last night, so I couldn't have any water. And I drink a lot of water. I needed air. And I usually have my morning coffee, and I couldn't do that either. And um, I'm nervous to go under anesthesia and have the thing in my hand. And you're just fine. I'm praying that it's a good outcome. 10x. So I mean, they think 10. 10, but we let's hope we have 10 at the end, right? So we want a 10, keep the 10 the whole time. How many would you be okay, happy with after PGT testing? Like three. I said that, that's interesting, right? Just enough to make sure we have a girl. <laughs> All right, guys, signing off. Wish her luck. Mm. I love you. I love you too. Today is Thursday, March 16th. I had the egg retrieval on Tuesday the 14th. So, they ended up extracting a 11 eggs. However, I got the call from my doctor yesterday that it was really six that ended up being like fully mature and like usable, I guess, right? And out of those six, four have been, they were all fertilized, four took. So as of right now, we have four fertilized eggs. I don't know the proper terminology for all of this, embryos, blastocysts, like, just bear with me. However, now what happens is you wait a few days and you see which ones out of those four make it. So I'm going to get a phone call on Monday. I am praying to God that all four make it because from that, we would then do PGT testing. And then from there, um, the PGT testing basically just is genetic testing. Last time, two years ago, we didn't do that. 
because we only had one doctor advised like we implanted that one into Jen and see how it went and everybody knows you know how that story went it was unsuccessful and just it was just such a nightmare right so now no matter what the odds are we're gonna PGT test we rather know ahead of time you know if something's up however again it just decreases the number so look at, at the end of all, all of this if we end up with two I'd be ecstatic, you know, it's not like I'm looking to have five more kids with Jen, you know, we want to have one. So if we have two, great. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to stay positive, stay focused, that everything's going to go well. But what was I going to say? Oh, so I always feel right, like energetically or manifesting, like, like, look, last time I swore, like I swore, like we were good. All we needed was that one. And I was totally shocked when we even dropped down to one. So this time I feel like I'm more aware, so I'm being more practical, I guess, more logical, kind of setting myself up for the expectation um, that this could go, this could go in a bad way, but maybe it doesn't, maybe it's good. I'm still talking all over the place. I feel like my brain's still a little um, spacey from the meds, but I guess I'm saying that at the end of the day, you really just don't know. And I think no matter what energy you put on something, either way at this point, what's going to be is going to be. And I'm trying to think that way so I don't make myself crazy. So, yeah, just just praying literally at night before I go to sleep. I'm just like praying, praying through this baby. And I picture I'm picturing a little girl and I, I picture her like grown and all the things just to kind of keep the focus on a high. So I feel great. Last time when I was recovering, I was like in excruciating pain for almost like two weeks. Like I had a really hard time. So this has not been so bad. That first night, Tuesday night, I was like, I think I had like a mild fever and I was sweating in the middle of the night. But other than that, that's been it. I'm just cramping. I'm not allowed to fully work out until I get my period in two weeks. So I'm not supposed to do any crazy activity right now. I did for the first time this morning work out like real light, like just some arms and I just want to get back to myself as fast as possible. I'm drinking a lot of water, trying to flush all of this out of my system. It was a lot of meds. I think it was 11 full days. So we will keep you guys posted when, when we get the call again on Monday. I think, you know, people really don't know, like, what women have to go through with all of this. Not spoken about enough. Like, women should know, you know, all women should know that if this is something they may want to do have children like start in your 20s don't wait till you're in your late 30s and now in my case 40 years old because the follicles you have the count does go down and if you don't have any left you can't you're not even getting pregnant you know more so too in the gay community you know i've had this conversation with jen that she was like you know i never even thought about any of this because i always had this dream to get married have children right away but like i don't think women in the gay community are thinking about that like I never thought like oh let me settle down and have a child naturally no I was with I was with an, a woman right so I didn't know like if you don't have kids early on like this could be this could be a problem and I was talking to one of the nurses too that she said that as well that like she gets a lot of women from the gay community going to do this in their late 30s and I don't know I feel like maybe too because we're like we're living like we're in our 20s for years, you know, like, <laughs> like, it's a different kind of life. You're going out, you're working, you're having a good time. Um, you're not thinking about settling down with children so early on in age. At least none of my friends, that's ever been the case. Everybody's been like in their late 30s and I'm watching everybody having a hard time with this and I know what I've been through. So I'm like, yo, like if someone said to me, hey, you know what you need to do? Like if you're going to be in a gay relationship, go find out now. Like find out if you have fertility problems, find out what's up, like take your eggs out, pick a donor, like do what you need to do, fertilize your eggs, freeze them and hold them. So in 10 years, when you're ready to go, they're sitting here for you. I would have done that. I would have done that if I would have known. So that's why I'm talking about this now and why I've been filming throughout some of this process. And that's about it. So look, I am wishing for the best. I just, I don't want to have to go through this again, but I really want a baby with my life. I really do. I really just, just one. It's like the perfect little completion to our um, unconventional yet conventional family. I just, I just came into my car, Jen's home. I just, I just didn't know where else to go. I just felt like I needed a minute. And we just got the call from the fertility doctor that out of 
the eggs that were fertilized, none of them made it. So the quality was just like too poor. And it just sucks like to go through so much and to have this be like the outcome. And, and I'm sad and I'm trying to like keep it together. I just wanted one, you know, like I just wanted one good egg. I just wanted to have like one baby with Jen, like just one. And like, and I did all the things, like I even did acupuncture and I'm afraid of needles. And I was taking prenatals for months and like I live a really like healthy lifestyle and I eat organic food and I work out and you know, I didn't drink, I did, like I don't do drugs, but it just, it doesn't matter. Like I wish that there was something I could do to like just make this work and we asked the doctor if it's worth you know going through another round or if it's just like egg quality and he feels like it's egg quality you know if even the doctor is advising like, it's probably not gonna matter you know they want to get paid right like he would say try it again and he's not even saying try it again so I just feel like there's no hope I don't know I think I feel like I'm gonna research like something else that I could possibly do and like I would go through it again I would go through it again if it, if if it meant a different outcome, I just, I just don't know. Well, that's two rounds now. Zero for zero. Damn. What's today? The 20th. Oh, 21st. Oh my God. So today is Tuesday, March 21st. We got the news yesterday. So last night, I called a friend that I know had gone through this and she gave me a recommendation of like a doctor out in Beverly Hills. So I think it's worth a phone call. Which um, is actually really funny that I used the same exact doctor when I was getting pregnant with Nico because I had some issues also. So it's like a sign. Like it was like, like a yeah. sign. I just didn't even think to call him because we aren't in California and we're here. But um, I think what we're going to do now that we've done two cycles already with the fertility clinic here um, and we've been unsuccessful is to just switch things up a little bit and see another doctor's opinion and um going to meet with the doctor i feel like when you when we get the call and when we got the call obviously we're both upset we're not asking the right questions so now that we've calmed down a bit i'd like for them to compare the cycles like the first cycle to this cycle and you know what happened what was different <laughs> to be continued <laughs> every time